Hi my dear students, I am Ronja ma'am and welcome to my channel. Today's video is dedicated to all my science wizards. Those who want to do their higher studies in science. So we are going to know everything about studying science and how to prepare to get in prestigious institutions like IISC. And we are going to get all the information from a very eminent professor of IISC, Dr. Shokto Basu. Dr. Basu has done his PhD from the University of Connecticut and he has been teaching at IISC for more than 10 years now. I welcome Dr. Basu to my channel and it's really my honor to interview you today. Okay, my first question to you, Dr. Basu, will be, if a student wants to study in a prestigious institution like IISC or IIT, NYSER, etc., then how should he or she prepare from school itself? In order to do well in IISC or in order to uh, do well in research, in, uh, you need certain amount of research culture that needs to be uh, cultivated inside, uh, inside a student before he comes and joins the institute. So this is not research that you should have done a lot of research, but it is basically the research acumen. That means how much of a creativity that you have. So uh, what a student needs to do from a very young age is basically to cultivate this creativity. For example, uh, we all take courses in physics during the school, right? We learn a lot of things, uh, right, from dynamics to optics and even uh, to a certain extent a little bit of quantum mechanics as well. Same with chemistry, same with maths. But when you actually do all these courses, we have a tendency that we actually do a little bit of rote learning. That means we try to solve problems rather than understanding the concepts. And this is where I think we lack a lot because understanding the key concepts of physics uh, or the key concepts of mathematics or the key concepts of chemistry or biology as a matter of fact that needs that cannot that is not essentially linked with problem solving so problem solving is required because you need to showcase your strength of understanding but problem solving can be also done through a varieties of shortcut processes which is not really helping your fundamentals in any big way so for the fundamental understanding of a particular subject you need to have need to read and understand the key concepts at a very young age and that will help in building up your fundamentals which will also help in your research uh, you know acumen development and when you get into IIC for example uh, you or uh, similar such institutes uh, like IIC, uh, you will have a, have actually an easier time, so to say, to cope up with these subjects. Okay, and you should also know that here at IIC, uh, the emphasis is not really on problem solving all the time. The emphasis is a lot on the understanding of the problem. That means if I give you an open-ended problem, you should be able to come up with a solution for that. So that may not be there in any of the books. For that, you need to understand the key concepts. So that concept development and the fundamental side of things needs to be cultivated at a very young age. Okay, so I have understood that understanding is the key. So students, from now on, whenever you are studying science, give a lot of importance to understanding. Okay, my next question to you, Dr. Basu, will be how to get admission in IISC? What is the process? And uh, please tell us about the test, admission test, and the interview. What happens there um, so that it's very clear to my viewers? So, if we are talking about, for example, admission, again, uh, from an IISC or IIT type of a concept, so admission to the UG or the undergraduate program in science or in engineering. Engineering, we all know that it is through the IIT JE. And uh, in IIC also, IIT JE, you can sit in the IIT JE, the JE Advanced and the JE Mains, and you can get admission to even the BS programs, uh, which is four year duration here. There are a few other options also, especially for IIC and for the ICERs. Um, 
that is the that is the new uh, science units in in Pune, Mohali, and various other places. There you will find that you can get admission through the KVPY route. Okay. So KVPY is a Kishore Vaigyanik program. So that is also an entrance exam, which is uh, also MCQ type. And but the interesting part here is that you clear that exam, then you have to go for an interview. And that interview is taken usually by the IISC professors. So there are fixed some people who qualify for that uh, entrance. They are actually interviewed, which particularly basically looks at these fundamental things which I was talking about a little earlier. They try to look at whether you have solved the problems just by mugging up or whether you have solved the problem understanding the key concepts. So KVPY is one route through which you can get to IISC. So once you qualify, then again you are interviewed by a committee at IISC and this committee again comprises of professors like me where they will grill you on your fundamental understanding of your UG knowledge that means at the undergraduate level whatever your discipline was it interview typically lasts for about half an hour 45 minutes depending on how you perform this is of course not taking away the fact that you still need to do problem solving to clear those entrances but problem solving needs to have a method Okay, it cannot be just rote learning. Suppose a student is studying physics uh, or chemistry or bio like BSc and then MSc. So he or she can become a professor. But suppose he or she does not want to become a professor. So what other options are there? So physics is a very large discipline, right? So it has got theoretical physics, astrophysics, nuclear physics right okay so solid state physics condensed matter physics and a lot of a uh, lot of areas in physics if you do not want to become a professor and i by professor i mean professor like position so you can be a research scientist also in a national lab which is essentially very similar that means you would be like a professor uh, so except that you don't have to teach so uh, so you i am talking about if you do not want to become a research scientist or a professor and or uh, I assume similar type of roles then there are certain areas of for example physics which will be very close to what we call applied sciences again more closer towards engineering there there are a lot of market opportunities okay so for example if you do MSc in, in physics for example radio physics is one example where there is a lot of opportunities electronics and radio physics so that would be one great area for doing, uh, you know, where you can get a job in a varieties of industries. Then if you do semiconductor physics, for example, there is a lot of scope to get a lot of, uh, you know, jobs in the industrial sectors. Even after you do your PhD, if you feel that you do not want to become a research scientist per se, but you want to become what we call you want to work in the industry, there are a lot of opportunities for that also. I had a lot of friends who basically did, for example, one did solid state physics and was employed in Intel. So he is a research scientist with Intel. So it is, it, is, it is also partially a research job, but not completely like a professor. So it is more of an industrial research that this guy does for Intel. But if you are uh, in a more applied side of the, of the, of the subject, like, or you are interested in the applied side of the subject, like for example, solid state physics, or condensed matter physics, or semiconductor physics, there are a lot of areas in physics, or radio physics, as I said, nanoelectronics, uh, so all these areas of physics now, uh, you can actually now have a good job prospect, okay, especially if your MSc work had a little bit of application flavor or your PhD thesis had an application context to it. So and if you have built something, for example, or you have done some industry related work also during your PhD, because in PhD also you can actually do that. So you're not completely on the theory or the abstract side of things, you are actually a little bit on the application side of things. So if you have that kind of a education, then of course it is easy uh, to get a job in one of these you know, industrial sectors. Industrial sectors meaning companies like Intel and others, other things like an engineer also can get, you can also get because uh, they look for people with a solid understanding how Intel wants to make a chip. Right. So there is a lot of research that goes on. So th this is a culmination or a melting pot of engineers, theory, I mean, uh, physicists, chemists, and a lot of material scientists, a lot of people who actually manufacture that chip. So I'm giving the example of Intel because that may be something which is very easily relatable 
because uh, Intel, we hear it everywhere from the, from the chip manufacturing point of view. So there are various other industries like this where you can actually get into that, uh, into that interdisciplinary type of a work which goes towards making a product. What message would you like to give to my students? They are all school students and they want to study science in a prestigious institution. So what would you advise them? My message to the youngsters basically who are in their formative years so to say uh, is that uh, see in any discipline whatever you want to study now uh, if you want to make it big in a particular discipline from a scientific point of view right so that means if you want to be known as a great engineer or a great physicist or a great chemist or whatever is your aim or in order to do something which is meaningful uh, which is impactful in, your, in, in whatever way you can, it need not be only research, it may be just the work that you are trying to do. In that particular perspective, from, from when you are in 9th standard to 12th standard, this is the time where you get exposed to a lot of subjects, a lot of intricacies. For example, you get to know a lot of laws of nature, you get to know a lot of mathematics, you get to know a lot of chemistry, a lot of biology depending on what you are studying. So it opens up an entire new world in front of you. But however, uh, what happens to us most of the time is that we waste this period. Uh, we waste this period uh, by doing, as I said in my previous answers, rote learning. So rote learning, once you fall in that particular trap, that means you try to mug up a lot of things or you try to find shortcut answers to certain problems, then you are not basically getting uh, the content of what that subject has to offer because you will be found out at some point because there is no textbook approach to real life research or real life problems. It is much easier to enjoy the subjects as much as you can. I know that there is a lot of you know pressure because you have to take uh, zillions of exams and you have to get into engineering colleges or medical colleges even good colleges where you can study basic sciences so there is a lot of pressure I can understand that. But even in that particular context, okay, you try to get a feel of the subject and that can only happen not by doing problems, but you have to actually read the books. For example, in physics, if you read something like a Resnick Halliday or a, or a Sears Zimansky and Young or even Feynman lectures on physics, right? So those are tough, but if you have the time or if you can make the time to, to read, those, uh, read those books, then that will go a long way in shaping your career. Uh, so that would be my message that don't just try to, you know, get a feel of a lot of problems and you can know how to solve a lot of problems, but you still do not know how that, uh, how the physical understanding of the thing is. For example, water coming down from a tap, simple problem, right? Perhaps you can solve a problem uh, if I ask you to, to uh, find out what is the, say, how much water is coming out. It's a simple problem, right? But if you watch closely, you will see a lot of interesting things in that stream of water that is coming out. You'll see a lot of waves, you'll see a lot of curls. Now you should ask the question, why are those things coming? It is not a very simple, straightforward flow. So once you look at that, then that will inspire you to think, okay, there may be more to it than what you are actually looking at. Then you read a little bit of an advanced topic and see that, okay, it is because of the air friction between the water and the air that is sometimes creating those ripples. So if you study more on that, then you will get more insights so that you have a more handle on a very simple problem of water coming down from a faucet so the or a tap. So these kind of things are essential if you have to build a scientific curiosity. So that scientific curiosity is the key. And so long as you don't develop that scientific curiosity, it, is, uh, it, will, it will not serve you in the long run because that is what is going to drive you, especially if you, if you want to go to research. Thank you, Dr. Basu, for your guidance. I'm sure you have inspired many budding scientists. My dear students, I'm sure you all are very inspired now. If you like the video, do click the like button and share this video with your friends. And for more such videos, do subscribe to my channel. May all your dreams come true.